Hi, it's Matt here from Go Green Autos. So here we have a Renault Kangoo electric van. It's a 2018 model. It's got the 33 kilowatt hour battery pack and it's an I model. And the I means it is battery owned. So there's no battery lease on this. And this one is a maxi van. So it means it's got that much extra in length. So it's a longer wheelbase van and it's got a sliding door on both sides. So first off, I'll talk about charging. The charging's at the front here on the Kangoos and the AC charging only, it's got a type two, seven and a half kilowatt charger. So these don't have DC rapid charging. However, the vans are cheaper because of that. And uh, because this has got the 33 kilowatt hour battery pack, it does about 50 miles more range than other electric vans in the class like um, Citroen Berlingo, Peugeot Partner and Nissan ENV200. So those have all got 22 or 24 kilowatt hour va uh, batteries. So with these, with a battery that's 50% larger, you're gonna get roughly 50 miles extra range. These have also got a very efficient motor and they've also got a heat pump heating system as well. So they're a lot more efficient in the winter and genuinely you would get 50 miles extra more range in one of these than you would with uh, the alternative electric vans. So these are ideal if you can charge at night. So if you're back at home or back at base and you can plug it in every night, then if it will do your daily uh, driving, then you won't need rapid charging. And actually you're better off having that 50% uh, extra battery capacity than having to stop and uh, do, do a charge and take that time out of your day. I'll just show you the charge cable. So here we've got a standard Type 2 to Type 2 32 amp uh, 5 meter cable. So this end plugs into a charger and all public AC chargers, home and workplace chargers have a Type 2 socket. So that goes into the charger and then this end goes into the front of the vehicle. And when pl plugging in on a um, 7 kilowatt charger you're going to charge at a rate of about 25 miles per hour. You can also supply a portable charger often called a granny cable and that will allow you to charge the van on a normal main socket using a three pin plug. Those limit your charge to 10 amp or 2.3 kilowatt because you can't put any more than that over a ring main otherwise your wiring will start getting a bit warm. Um, so when charging on a granny cable it will charge at a rate of about 9 to 10 miles an hour but ultimately if you've got an electric vehicle you'd want to get a proper wall charger installed, particularly while the government grant subsidizes that as well. This van is a bit unusual because it's got the diesel heater option. So behind here, which would be a diesel filler cap uh, on a normal van, again, is a diesel filler cap. So uh, this option is very rare in the UK. I've only ever seen one other Kangoo with this fitted. Uh, this is an auxiliary diesel heater. So what that means is uh, you've got this additional heating system that you can use in the winter and there is a switch down there to turn it on and this that basically extends your range in the winter so with all electric vehicles the heater does use a lot of energy and that's why you get less range during winter months because it does take an awful lot of energy to heat the cabin and uh, obviously when you've got this auxiliary diesel heater, you've still got the heat pump heating system, but you've got the option to boost it effectively with uh, the auxiliary diesel heater if you want to. It doesn't use much fuel, it's um, very efficient, but you've got that option in the winter if you want to maximize your winter range. So the primary purpose of this video is to show the condition and you've probably seen my videos before you know I point out every minor little stone chip mark or scratch I can find. I don't hide anything because then that gives people the confidence to buy the vehicle from afar without coming here to view it first and most vehicles do go without a viewing first because of the detail I put into these videos and I can deliver these anywhere in the country. Just open the side door to let a bit of light in the back and we'll start at the cargo area. So there's some very strong shadows today because it is very sunny but anyway it's fully ply lined we've got the charging cable there type 2 to type 2 AC charging cable full size uh, steel bulkhead obviously sliding door on both sides on the maxi vans uh, toolkit there because these do have a full size spare underneath 
And then bodywork wise, this is absolutely immaculate. Uh, I'm going to point a few things out, but I'm being ultra picky and most people really wouldn't care on a van. There are a few scratches at the top there, which I've touched up with a touch up stick. And that's purely where people slam the wrong door first and the top of that door hits that door. And it's something you always get on kangoos. You often will get a dent here and uh, chipped paint, but not so in this case, it's only been done a few times. Um, yeah, the back doors are dent free. Apart from there, there is a tiny little dent, but I'm being super picky because uh, yeah, that's hardly visible. Looking down this side, it's absolutely immaculate. The tires are all good. I've got the tire tread depths on the website. Uh, there isn't any scratches or dents whatsoever down this side. Uh, no scratching of any significance on the mirror. There's one little scratch there, but again, you really wouldn't worry about that. There's a few scratches on the wheel trims. These Renault wheel trims do tend to protrude rather, and you always get that, but they're just plastic wheel trims. Um, the uh, front, bump, uh, front wings on these are plastic and very flexible, so they tend to always be dent free on a Kangoo because they're so flexible. Um, the front bumper is all scratch free, which is quite unusual. Yeah, no scratches at all. Um, bonnet's all in really nice condition. There was about three or four tiny, tiny stone chips which have been touched up. Uh, that's the biggest one, but they're absolutely tiny, all less than a millimetre. Um, this wheel trim has got a little bit more scuffing than the rest, but you always get that on the near side one where people park against uh, curbs. So everything I'm pointing out, um, I've taken pictures of in the photo gallery, so go on the website, you can look at the pictures full screen and you can also zoom up and have a good look in detail. Looking along this side, the only thing I'm going to point out is there is a little dent in that door, but really small, and actually I'm going to run the polishing machine on it because I've forgotten to do that because there's a little uh, grey mark in the paint there which will completely polish out, um, but it's very small dent, it's about an inch. Um, and if that was polished, you would hardly even notice it. So that will look a lot better. Um, but yeah, the rest of it's really immaculate. For a van of this age and this mileage, it is quite exceptional. Uh, looking around the back bumper, it's all really tidy. There's a little scuff there on that um, lens. That's just a dummy light. There's nothing behind that. Uh, but yeah, there's a few scratches here where stuff's been loaded in the back, which of course you're always going to get. But yeah, overall, much, much better condition than uh, you would normally expect. And then looking on the inside, door card is all scratch free. If I just remove my bit of paper, got new carpet mats uh, there on the floor. If you want to see the floor underneath, absolutely zero wear. Uh, driver's seat, absolutely no wear all still looking like new. The only things I need to point out is two on that side, which we'll go round to. So the only two things I'm going to point out is a little bit of white paint there on the passenger seat. And there's a bit of scratching here on the dash and on the top of the glove box. So someone's clearly had something loaded in the front and it's rubbed a bit and just scratched very lightly the surface of the um, dash there and a little bit on that silver trim. But it's not too bad. Uh, the door card is, is uh, scratch free as well. While I've here, just reminded me that this has also got the optional alarm fitted, the factory alarm as well. The only other thing I'll show on the inside, which is something all Kangoos do, is the bit of plastic around the key it tends to get scratched where people don't put the key in straight. Um, but very common Renault thing, for some reason, the plastic that they make that out of is much more prone to light scratches than any other plastic they make it out of. I don't know why they do that, but anyway, all Kangoos are like that. And then if I just start it up, we can see there the mileage is 27,304. So this one does have uh, the DAB radio and um, it's got um, MP3 streaming from the USB port there. And uh, it's obviously also got Bluetooth. This one doesn't have air conditioning. Air conditioning isn't standard in these. That's uh, I think about a, a 700 pound upgrade or something like that. Anyway, this one doesn't have it, but of course it's got that um, auxiliary diesel heater on this one, which is very rare. Uh, down here, we've got the eco switch. Um, and then this is obviously our gear selector. 
drive neutral, reverse and park. So you drive it like an automatic, even though it um, doesn't have a gearbox because electric vehicles don't have gearboxes. So the range of these, uh, this battery is only at about 45% um, charged or so, because I tend to not keep them fully charged while they're sat in stock. Um, so I'm not going to bother showing you what it shows on the range meter, because that would be a bit irrelevant. So the full details on the range is on the website. But generally, if you drive these economically, you're looking at about 130 miles in the uh, summer if you're driving them in a city where your average road speed is down you can get more you can you can if you drive gently you can get 140 miles or so out of these and then in the winter obviously your uh, winter range is generally less because of the heater use but because this has got the um, diesel auxiliary heater then winter range in this is going to be much better than they are in other kangoos but uh, it depends, again, as always, it depends how you drive, but generally you're going to get around the 100 mile mark genuine real world um, range in the winter. So the next thing you're going to want to know about is the uh, traction battery. So generally battery degradation really isn't something you need to worry about. The battery on these will more than last the life of the vehicle. Uh, the Renault batteries are particularly good. The, um, they will generally only lose half a percent or less per year. Uh, I have scanned the battery on this one and the battery is currently at 98% state of health. There's one other little thing which I have just noticed which I hadn't previously seen is right down low on the bottom of the front bumper there is a little indentation here and, and sort of a scratch uh, where it's clearly caught something uh, below where the fog light would be and it's um, low enough that when you're at normal standing height you don't see that and i'll just point out there's some tiny little scratches here in the front bumper and that's because the charge port flap was previously rubbing on that because this trim was misaligned but that's all now snapped back in its proper place and that doesn't rub and then i'll also just say the whole vehicle has been waxed including the roof i'll just show you the paperwork with this one uh, firstly we've got two original remote keys there and then we've got the book pack. Uh, as I said, this one has got the factory fitted alarm option as well. Um, got the user manual. This didn't have any service history stamps in the back, but have just serviced it. Um, we've got the security sticker in the back there as well though. Um, but servicing on electric vehicles is really just an inspection. The only serviceable part is the um, pollen filter actually. Um, so anyway, I'll go into that a bit more in a minute. Uh, we've got the V5 here. It's come in from RCI Financial Services, which is Renault Finance. No previous keeper, so only one keeper from new. And the registration date is the 16th of February 2018. So yeah, as I said, it's just been serviced. Uh, it's had a new cabin filter. Uh, the wheels have been rebalanced, the tyre tread depths are all uh, 7 millimetres or more, but as I said that's all on the website. The brake fluid has been tested, that's all good. The front and rear brake pads are all excellent. Uh, I would just say the regen braking on the Kangoos is, is really to the max, so you can drive these genuinely for mile upon mile and never touch the foot brake. Um, so generally if these are driven properly, uh, the brake pads would last 100,000 miles or more. Um, yeah, coolants are all right. The traction battery is at 98% state of health, as I've showed you, and the 12 volt battery has been charged, and that's at 80% state of health. So, yeah, all good there. And servicing on these is absolutely minimal, it's every 25,000 miles or two years. The next, the MOT, uh, it was done in February uh, 2021. So the MOT is until February 2022. However, the mileage recorded on it was 70,487 miles, whereas the van is currently at 27,304. Uh, I truly believe this is just an input error, uh, which you do see actually quite frequently on uh, MOTs. Um, and there's a few reasons why I've, uh, I can prove that. Well, I'll show why I think that is an input error, because I've been around and inspected this van. Firstly, the general condition. This is absolutely immaculate, and this does not look like a working van that has done 70,000 miles. It doesn't even look like one that's done 27,000 miles. Secondly, you cannot hide seat wear, and this has got 
There's absolutely zero wear on the bolsters at all. The fabric's not great on the Kangoos and you can always tell the mileage of a vehicle by looking at the seat. And there is absolutely no way that that seat has done 70,000 miles. You could say the seat's been swapped. That's true, but you would probably see a different, um, slight different variance in the fabric between the two because of the age, and there isn't. Uh, next, you would normally see wear on the steering wheel. These are plastic wheels and they've got a, um, a texture to them and that texture does wear with use and again um, you know you can tell the mileage of a vehicle by looking at the wear and the texture is all still there so again that steering wheel is even better for one that's done 27,000 miles uh, that steering wheel has definitely not done 70,000 miles also this van came with no carpets and as you can see the rubber floor absolutely nowhere nowhere on the pedals the general wear and tear on this van is absolutely minimal and as I said it doesn't even look like it's done 27,000 miles so there's absolutely no way you could hide that higher mileage. Two other little telltale signs is often paint worn away on the sills because obviously uh, people are getting in and out using it a lot particularly with work boots on and you tend to get paint worn away on these lips not so in this case and also uh, the keys buttons worn out, particularly on the Kangoos, they're not that great. Uh, this spare key, never been used, absolutely brand new. This is the key that's been used and nowhere at all on those buttons. And then finally, uh, the distance the van has covered on these is actually stored in the traction battery ECU in the BMS. And obviously I've scanned that to get the battery state of health. So I'll bring that back up on the screen again. And you can see that the recorded mileage in the traction battery is 43,904 kilometers. And you work that back out, that's 27,280 miles, which is uh, just a few miles different to what it's showing on the clock because they, they the conversion does vary a little bit because they don't do the decimal points but anyway again proves that the battery mileage matches the dash mileage which matches the seat steering wheel the pedals the floor and the general condition so that is why i truly believe that is just um an, an error on the input because there's absolutely no way that this van has done 70,000 miles. And there's also no motor wine on this. Uh, because I see so many electric vehicles, I can I can tell the the rough mileage of a vehicle based on the, the noise of the motor, because as they age, they tend to, um, the, the pitch of the wine tends to change a little bit, uh, particularly on acceleration and deacceleration. But absolutely none on this. Uh, it's in cracking condition. Um, there's no faults or errors whatsoever. Everything works. Um, as it should do and uh, yeah just in lovely condition really and also we've got the green number plates uh, because it is a zero emission vehicle um, with these there's no road tax and uh, obviously if you're in London there's no um, low emission zone charges but of course those zones are rolling out to other cities around the country as well and the running cost of these does depend on how much you pay for electricity. If you're fortunate enough that you can get free electricity, then the running costs are incredibly low. Uh, but typically they're about 3 to 4p a mile to run, whereas a diesel van would be about 14p a mile. But if you can charge this on a cheap rate overnight tariff, then that running cost goes down to about a penny a mile. So I think that's about it. Um, everything else is on the website, so do have a look there, but you can always email me if you've got any questions. So this one's ready to go. So if you're interested, give me a call or email. I can deliver these anywhere in the country and it will come to you on a flatbed or a trailer and it will be fully charged and ready to use.